How much do you remember about hyperkalemia from your time in the course? Did you see an ECG that looked something like this? You had some tall peak T waves everywhere and you were taught, hey, this is what it looks like moving on when you were in cardiology. Or maybe did they teach you a little more? Did they say, well, this might be found in a renal failure patient that has missed dialysis? Or did they even tell you things like they might have hand cramps and feet cramps, right? Those carpal pedal spasms, if you remember your terminology. Well, while all of this is true of a case of, of mild hyperkalemia, the overall idea that this is the only thing you're going to see in hyperkalemia is wrong. Hyperkalemia manifests different ways, and this is only one manifestation of that. And honestly, compared to other cases, it's not even a very serious one. Hyperkalemia comes in stages like many disorders. So as you look at the screen, you can see the normal manifestation of potassium in the bloodstream is nothing, all right? It needs to be there in normal ranges. It keeps our myocytes predominantly negative, somewhere around 70 millivolts. And when all the other electrolytes are in check, this is what allows the process of depolarization to happen, okay? When we get above six milliequivalents, we begin to see that tall peak T wave, that repolarization abnormality because we have an electrolyte inside our cells that is doing something that shouldn't be done. It's pulling things in a negative direction that they don't want to go and disrupting homeostasis. As we get above 7.5, we begin to see some funny things happen. First off, the PR interval is going to widen and the QRS duration is also going to widen. Now, you still maintain that tall peak T wave. But as the cells become more and more negative, they become harder and harder to depolarize with the normal amounts of electrolytes that are left to combat this potassium. As you move above 9 milliequivalents, you begin to see what's called a sinusoidal wave, and it's named after the pattern that it represents. So, like many disorders, hyperkalemia comes in stages, and we can catch a patient at any stage in there. So let's have a look at an ECG. Let's say you show up on scene and you walk into a patient's room, and the machine spits this ECG out, I want you to ask yourself, do you look at this and immediately think hyperkalemia? Well, if you do, good. You probably didn't need to watch this video, but if you didn't, there may be some things you don't understand about hyperkalemia that you have to get in and learn about, and that's the purpose of this video. This is a pretty classic sinusoidal rhythm, and this is a very high level of potassium in the bloodstream. Now, why do we care about this? Well, the chief complication of this is cardiac arrest your patient can literally go into a systole, all right, or they can go into fibrillation rhythms and things like that from this because their myocytes inside their heart are so very negative right now, it's actually hard to depolarize them. So you can see failure from this. You can see hypotension and things of that nature. Now, there are many ways to get rid of potassium in the bloodstream inside of the emergency department or inside of the hospital room, but one of the things that we do is in the pre-hospital environment is we like to give someone a gram of calcium. Now, many protocols will reflect this. I'm not telling you to violate a protocol. But whenever you, you review them and you see administration of calcium as something to combat the potassium, don't look at it funny. It's the right way to go. What it does is, since we have a high level of potassium in the bloodstream, we increase the calcium relative to that, and it allows a more routine depolarization of the cardiac muscle until the potassium can be cleared from the bloodstream and everything can be put back into a level that would be representative of homeostasis. So take a look at your online resources and uh, see what you can find, what ECGs you can see to really get a good handle or a good feel for what this looks like where you can identify it uh, nearly by morphology alone. And you will be much, much better prepared the next time you have a true hyperkalemic patient and you may be at a loss for what kind of rhythm is in front of you. All right, get out there and practice.